Leslie here, and today I want to address a topic that many of you have DM'd me about or requested in the forum comments, and that is around female hair loss. So I know that a lot of people are experiencing hair loss right now, either as a secondary effect of having contracted COVID, around one third of patients will experience some hair loss, uh, as well as just from stress. And with this pandemic ongoing, a lot of uncertainty in the world, people are feeling stress. And unfortunately, one of the ways that that manifests is in hair loss. There are an additional five hormonal causes of hair loss that I'm going to address in a second. But I wanted to start first with stress because it's such a relevant topic right now, especially as Britain goes into lockdown for the second time. That'll happen this Thursday. And uh, how do we actually find ways to calm the fight, flight, freeze response of our sympathetic nervous system, which is what is looping us into anxiety, stress, maybe even depression for those who have experienced even more severe mental health issues such as bipolar or schizophrenia, these are potential triggers. So what kinds of things can we do? Obviously, I'm not a doctor, I can't diagnose or prescribe, so always please do see your doctor first. However, as, a, as an individual consumer or patient, there are some things that you can think about to help deal with stress. And I have previously talked about the use of breath work. Uh, Wim Hof has a very good breath work app that you can download and you can practice breathing along with him. Or you can try the 478 breath that Dr. Andrew Weil advocates. So that's where you breathe in for a count of four, you hold for seven, and then you exhale for eight seconds. And you only need to do that four times. So that's one way. A final breath hack that you can try is box breath. And that's where you breathe in either to the count of four, five, or six seconds. You hold for that same number of seconds. You exhale for the same number of seconds. So say it's four seconds. And then you hold the emptiness in your gut. You can sort of feel your tummy tuck in as you exhale and you hold that in, you engage the core. When you do that, you are actually activating the parasympathetic nervous system by stimulating the vagus nerve, which is deep in our core. So those are some breath hacks to actually help you deal with stress. What about supplements? Well, I've previously talked about some of the ones that I like. Um, in particular, I like progesterone. So you can take a topical progesterone cream like this one, um, and you simply rub it on your forearms, uh, which is a, a, an area of very thin skin, so it absorbs very quickly. And really within seconds, you will feel a kind of, ah, uh, because it is an agonist against adrenaline, which is part of that fight, flight, or freeze uh, system. Another thing that you can look into is something called NAC or N-acetylcysteine. And I've talked about this before. This particular brand is Nutri. It's, um, I suppose it's equivalent in the United States would be pure encapsulation. So they're both, they were both brands originally formulated with physicians in mind to prescribe. But you can get N uh, NAC or NAC from a lot of different suppliers in both Europe and the US. It's very common. As a matter of fact, um, NAC or NAC is listed on the uh, World Health Organization's list of 40 most essential medications. And so this is used in hospitals if you have a paracetamol or acetaminophen overdose, then they would give you the IV version of this. It's a very effective detoxifier. Now, I came to learn about it because my doctor put me on it. This was to help me detox excess estrogen, and I will get to estrogen later, but if you are on hormone replacement therapy and you are not good at detoxifying estrogen, N-acetylcysteine may be part of the solution 
There may be some other things like calcium deglucurate and DIM and glutathione that may be part of that detoxification stack. But in the context of stress, it's NAC is very useful, but it also is a precursor to the body's master antioxidant glutathione. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I talk about glutathione a lot. So um, glutathione is something that you can get in your diet from things like, um, you know, kale or broccoli. And these are brassica vegetables and they are a source of, of, uh, of this uh, to get into your diet. But supplements obviously help you leapfrog forward because they are in much more concentrated doses. So if you are stressed, please consider trying over-the-counter N-acetylcysteine. There are very few side effects. Again, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm not prescribing or diagnosing, but you know, you can ask your doctor about it. You can do your own research on Google. There are a number of studies which talk about its safety profile. It has a very good safety profile and it wouldn't obviously be sold over the counter at all these health food stores unless uh, they felt that it was safe enough for consumers to use. The other thing you can try is then topical progesterone, or you can also speak to your doctor about potentially trying some hormone replacement therapy with progesterone added in orally. The difference between oral and topical progesterone is that the topical progesterone will disappear from your body faster than the oral. So if you are using it to sleep through the night, you will want oral progesterone as opposed to topical. So what about these other five causes of hair loss that I mentioned that are hormonal. And let's bear in mind that our hormones are very sensitive to our environment. So if we are stressed, our hormones will, uh, will change. They will get out of balance. They're very sensitive to this. I'm going to talk about thyroid hormones, uh, estrogen and progesterone and testosterone. So let's talk about when your thyroid becomes dysregulated. I mentioned before the idea that we need to try to optimize ourselves, both in terms of our nutrient uh, intake as well as our hormonal intake. And to optimize means that you wanna be in that Goldilocks zone, right? You wanna have just the right amount, not too little, not too much, just right in the middle, the exact right amount for you to optimally perform. And it is that way with our hormones. So you will experience hair loss due to underactive thyroid as well as overactive thyroid. How do you know if you have one or the other? If you have overactive thyroid, you will find you have palpitations. You will find you are warm when other people are quite cold. You may find you have a ton of energy and as a result, you won't be keeping the weight on. Your metabolism will be so fast, you can seemingly eat anything and the weight just continues to drop off of you. Unfortunately, that also means that the hair will drop off of you too, which is not a good thing. So what are the things that your doctor will tell you if you have hyperthyroidism? And of course your doctor will test you for this. So um, there are some very serious treatments here, including radiation therapy, which will destroy thyroid tissue as a way to downregulate it. If you don't want to do that, uh, and you don't have such hyperthyroidism that it is hurting your health, there are some more gentle things that you could potentially try. Again, speak about this with, uh, with your medical practitioner. I mentioned before these vegetables. So I've got some broccoli here and some kale. And interestingly, both of these, if you eat them raw, are suppressors of thyroid hormone. And so you could do that. If you are conversely hypothyroid, you wanna make sure that you cook your kale and your broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, any of the brassica family members, cabbage. 
And the reason why is that these vegetables contain oxalic acid. Now, oxalic acid will suppress the function of the thyroid. If you are hyperthyroid and you want to find a way to gently suppress it, you might consider this. I'm not saying that this works, but it's just food. It's not, there are no downsides to trying it. If it helps, why not? So the other way that the thyroid goes out of balance is if you have hypothyroidism. And I've talked about this before because I am a hypothyroid patient. Now, you'll know if you're hypothyroid because unlike with hyperthyroidism, you will feel cold all the time, especially your hands and feet. People will shake your hand. Well, not anymore during COVID, but previously they'll shake your hand and say, gosh, you feel so cold. Uh, you will find that you're lethargic you want to sleep a lot, that you are brain fogged. You might find that uh, your reflexes are not quite as quick as before. You may see other physical signs, including um, weight gain. So your metabolism will slow down. Instead of shifting weight, you're holding onto it and you will lose the outer third of your eyebrows. This doesn't always happen. Loss of the outer third of the eyebrows is something correlated with hair loss too. In both of these cases, the hair loss will be diffuse all across the head, not in a particular patchy way, which is what happens with say an autoimmune condition like alopecia areata. So um, what do you do if you're hypothyroid? Again, you'll need to go to your doctor to confirm that this is the case, but you will notice that your basal body temperature is very low. Uh, you can take that first thing in the morning before you rise. Your pulse also will be very low. It might be around the 45 to 50 mark, and your doctor may say, wow, what an athletic heart. Actually, it is the sign of uh, a hypothyroid heart. You may also have your blood pressure tested. If it is lower when you test using the cuff standing up, if it is lower standing up than it is when you take your blood pressure sitting down, that is a demonstration that the heart is having a hard time pumping blood as you were standing up. So it's much easier for it to plump, pump it around while you're sitting down than if you were standing up. So these are all indicators of hypothyroidism. Your doctor will probably prescribe you some kind of levothyroxine, that's synthetic thyroid hormone, and it is the T4 or raw thyroid hormone. That is a precursor to T3, which is the bioavailable thyroid hormone for which we have receptors in every cell in our body. And um, you can also get desiccated thyroid where that bioavailable T3 is already formed. This comes from dried pig thyroid. So an example of that would be something like this. This is Urfa thyroid from Canada. And you can get it uh, in some continental countries, Germany, France, uh, Belgium. You can get this in those countries. You can't get this in Great Britain easily. Uh, it's quite, quite hard and it's not, or until recently anyway, it was not in the physician's desk reference here. So do bear that in mind. Now, um, if you are hypothyroid, what else can you do to support your thyroid that's natural, that is not going to a doctor or taking some kind of additional thyroid hormone? Well, you could increase your intake of seaweed, of kelp and iodine. There are also iodine tablets, but I've shown you this happens to be just a, a high street brand. You can get seaweed to eat as a kind of snack. And another thing that will help would be Brazil nuts. So these Brazil nuts, you only need about two or three, but selenium is very helpful for supporting thyroid function. So those are natural things that you can do. There was also a very interesting study out of Brazil a few years ago about using cold laser therapy as a way to um, jumpstart or kind of you know, like jumper cables on the thyroid. That's only one study, but it's something worth thinking about, keeping an eye on in case you want to look for other therapies to help with improving your thyroid uh, performance. So what about estrogen? 
So we all know that women make estrogen, men actually make estrogen too. As a matter of fact, both sexes make estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone just in different ratios. So any kind of dysregulation in these hormones is also going to lead to changes in your hair. Let's talk about estrogen dominance. So that is where you, uh, you don't actually have enough progesterone circulating in your body. You might find that uh, if you're trying to get pregnant, that you just don't have enough of a uterine lining. The womb lining does not plump up enough for a fertilized embryo to implant. So what you would do to fix that is again, you would look for a progesterone, supp not supplement, but a, you would supplement with progesterone that your doctor prescribes for you. They might even give you some kind of a topical as well, just to balance out that estrogen dominance. And estrogen dominance is, uh, it can be quite unpleasant. It often happens when we go into perimenopause and it, we find that we end up getting uh, too many night sweats. We wake up in the night because we can't sleep. And the reason why we can't sleep is we don't have enough progesterone. Progesterone really does help with sleep. So definitely see your medical professional to get that taken care of. Now, conversely, what about a loss of estrogen? Again, we're out of that Goldilocks area. If we have too little estrogen, which is exactly what happens when women go into menopause, we can also find that that leads to hair loss. So what are the things that we can do for that? Well, you can go to your doctor and talk to them about hormone replacement therapy. And I've talked about this before. I know many women, postmenopausal women, are very concerned about the cancer risk. And we all have probably heard of a friend, relative, a friend of a friend who got cancer, was on HRT. Um, a couple of things that I would like to say about that. First of all, the original study, and I believe it was the Framingham Nurses Study, that showed this correlation was done such a long time ago that the type of hormones of estro estrogens that they were using were from horses urine which is not bioidentical to our own and that was called premarin mare for female horse and as a result i think it's not really a fair comparison there was a more recent oxford study which actually showed uh, looked at bioidentical hormone replacement. It did show some risk for breast cancers. However, it was much lower than in the original study. Why would those breast cancers happen? Because those individuals are not detoxifying the excess estrogen well. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are certain things that a functional medicine doctor can do. You do need to monitor this on a regular basis with your doctor. That might mean every three to six months. It is an extra expense. It's true. However, there are so many reasons to consider hormone replacement therapy. In particular, Dr. Dale Bredesen likes hormone replacement therapy. He is uh, at the Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, and he is an expert on reversing Alzheimer's. And if you look at his book, The End of Alzheimer's, or if you listen to any interviews with him where he talks about hormone replacement therapy, he will say that for women who are twice as likely to get Alzheimer's than men, that this is a way to prevent it. It is one of the pieces of the puzzle. It is not the only piece, but it is something that has great benefit to the brain. So please do bear in mind hormone replacement therapy, not just for hair loss, but also for the other benefits for brain protection, as well as osteoprevention from um, osteoporosis, protection from. So those are the ways that an estrogen imbalance can actually lead to hair loss. The final way that hormones can get out of whack is testosterone. So I've talked about testosterone before, 
in the context of male pattern baldness. And this happens not to every man. This happens to some men who have very high activity of an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. And it converts testosterone into dihydrotestosterone or DHT, which miniaturizes the hair follicle. So you don't actually lose your hair overnight, but what happens is it shrinks the hair follicles and it will shrink it in particular places on the head. So uh, you would notice this, you see guys who lose hair right across the top uh, and they might have the sort of friar's ring around the edges. They still have that hair, but they lose it on the top. So male pattern baldness. Unfortunately, women can get it too. Women who, uh, who are more likely to have high 5-alpha reductase activity will have a direct blood relative, father, a brother, who exhibits male pattern baldness. They are more likely to have polycystic ovarian syndrome, and they may also have cystic acne. What these all have in common is they depend on high androgen activity. So for these women, uh, there are things that you can do naturally. Your doctor may prescribe you hormones to balance things out, potentially using uh, hormones to, uh, to just act in, change the ratio of testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone in your body. But if you want to try something natural to inhibit 5-alpha reductase activity, there are a variety of things you can do. And I've talked about some of these before. So I've done a video on saw palmetto before. I'm not gonna talk about that again, but there are some supplements that work. One of them is evening primrose oil. And this is very common supplement. You can get it really anywhere. And it's very high in something called gamma linoleic acid. And GLA has been shown to inhibit 5-alpha reductase activity, so it stops that conversion of testosterone into DHT and just short circuits that miniaturization process. Please bear in mind you need to do this right as you notice the hair loss. Another thing that would work would be green tea. And I love green tea. I drink it all the time. You can take this as matcha or you can take it as uh, just a tea bag. Now, these have both been shown, both um, evening primrose oil and green tea and salt palmetto have been shown to work um, in some but not all people. So if you were to go to your doctor and you wanted to treat this with a prescription medicine, he would give you minoxidil, which is a topical treatment. It definitely works. Uh, generally about 68% of the people. If you're a woman, you'd probably be given finasteride. If you use one of these supplements, your efficacy rate between evening primrose oil, green tea, and saw palmetto is around 50%. However, there's no downside to these. They're just foods, right? You can just incorporate them into your diet. So those are some things that you can do to prevent hair loss if you are experiencing male pattern type hair loss. So that is a deep dive into the causes, as I see them, of hair loss in women. And I didn't go into alopecia because that's an autoimmune condition and that really deserves its own special spot uh, on a video. But I hope that this video has been informative. If you've got any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. If you've got any topics you want me to cover, again, leave those in the comments below. I do have a newsletter that I put out on a semi-regular basis where I will alert you to when I'm doing a live webinar. So again, you can ask me some of those questions. And um, also, if you like this video, think about subscribing. It's always great seeing you guys. See you next time.